Okay, hello everybody, it's Dr. Schultz here, and we're going to do a quick video lesson on how to deal with time-dependent forces. We're going to start off by thinking about a problem that doesn't depend on time. Problems involving forces that do not depend on time are really not too hard to solve, and we've solved quite a bit of them in physics last year. For example, if I ask you to find the final velocity of a 5 kilogram object, if it starts from rest and is acted upon by a constant force of 10 newtons for 4 seconds, you will recall that um, we can probably just solve this using a kinematics equation for constant acceleration. Some great graphics here. And so you would probably resort to the equation v final equals v initial plus at. In this particular example, the initial velocity is 0 meters per second because we're told that the object starts from rest. We know that the time is 4 seconds. And we can go back to Newton's second law to calculate the acceleration of an object if the force on it is 10 newtons and the mass is 5 kilograms. And that's an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. And so the solution to the problem is pretty easy. It's going to be um, 0 plus 2 times 4, or 8 meters per second. And so uh, in this particular case, the, the force acting on the object did not have a time dependence. It was just a steady 10 newtons. And the solution was a fairly straightforward uh, kinematics equation. Let's now make this more interesting and ask the question, what happens if the force varies with time? As an example, find the final velocity of a 5 kilogram object if it starts from rest and is acted on by a force whose magnitude is given by the formula F equals 5t squared. And 5 would have the units of newtons per second squared. And we're going to assume that this force acts from 0 to 4 seconds. So first off, we cannot use a kinematics equation because the um, the acceleration is not going to be constant. Uh, if you think about it, the force in this problem grows with the square of time, and so the acceleration is also going to increase as time goes on. And so we can't use a kinematics equation. So our starting point is going to be to write down Newton's second law, F net equals m dv dt. And we are replacing acceleration with the differential expression dv dt and we're anticipating that we're going to um, have to split that up and separate the variables. So the first step in any problem like this is to separate the variables. And uh, what we do is we want to move any terms that have time onto the left and keep any terms that may have velocity on the right. So in this particular case, um, we're going to, we could factor out the m by dividing both sides by m. Now m does not depend on time, but oftentimes it's placed on that side of the equation. And uh, f net, of course, is a function of time, so it stays there. And the dt comes over, leaving dv on the right side. And the idea is, is that we can now integrate both sides of the equation. The left side is a time integral, and the right side is a velocity integral. And uh, there really isn't any velocity dependent term in this uh, problem, so we don't have anything in the velocity integral. We'll be basically integrating the constant 1. So our next step um, is going to be to assume that we have uh, endpoints. We can, we can rewrite each integral as a definite integral. So evaluate the time integral from t initial to t final and evaluate the velocity integral from v initial to v final. Now we go ahead and we substitute um, 5 kilograms for the mass. 5t squared is f net. And our time ranges from 0 to 4 seconds. And so that takes care of the left side of the integral. On the right side of the integral, we're going to assume that we start from rest, and so the initial velocity is zero. And uh, we will integrate to v final, which is actually going to be uh, our answer. So 
So let's carry through the uh, integration. Uh, 1 fifth multiplies times 5, because that 5 factors out of the integral. And the t squared becomes 1 third t cubed. And uh, so we have that on the left side. On the right side, the integral of 1 is uh, going to turn out to be v. And now it's simply a matter of evaluating. by plugging in our endpoints. So we're left with e evaluating t cubed over 3 from 0 to 4 seconds and v final minus 0. And this brings us to 4 cubed over 3 minus 0 cubed over 3 is equal to v final and of course that reduces to 64 thirds meters per second. So this strategy is, is kind of generally the strategy that you would use um, let's just review what we did. We began by writing Newton's second law in differential form, writing dv dt for a. We then separated the variables by bringing time terms over to the left and uh, velocity terms on the right, if there are any. Uh, you then carry out the integral by establishing endpoints of integration in both time and velocity. And then you evaluate the definite integral and come up with your solution. So this can essentially be used with any problem in which the force depends on time. So um, your homework tonight, or at least before you come to class tomorrow, is to um, evaluate a situation in which f net is equal to 25 plus 10t. So this is a time varying force. Uh, let's assume that it acts on a 2 kilogram mass. Let's assume that at 3 seconds the velocity is plus 100 meters per second. And I would like you to find the velocity at exactly 8 seconds. Okay? And so what I'd like you to do tonight is to work this out on a little piece of paper. And when you come into class tomorrow, I'll ask you to show it to me. Or to, at the very least have a question to ask me about it. But let's see if we can work this out using the same approach. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.